Hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. I am your host, Corey C., and I'm here with a very special guest today. I am here with Kevin, the founder of Purple Penguin. How are you today, Kevin? How's everything? Doing well, Corey. Thanks for having me out. Absolutely. So, so can you tell me what made you fall in love with the concept of specifically like NFTs, and why did that inspire you to start Purple Penguin? The, I think for me, the um, thing that made me most fall in love with it right away was a new tool in the kit as a creator. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an artist, um, not the art behind me. That's a friend of mine's, um, but I'm an artist. I run an or, uh, I organize events and I've worked in gaming for a long time. So I see the opportunity with this new tool in the kit to build communities and uh, incentivize and engage with, with people. So I see the ability to expand on what we have already with our experiences as community members. And then that's also a a blank canvas. We've never really had um, an opportunity like this in in my lifetime where there's this new developing industry that anybody can jump in very easily. Um, There was something similar that happened with cannabis when I was working in that field, but there's a lot more red tape in that. Whereas with NFTs, it's a global community. Uh, Anybody can just get started if you have an idea and there's not a lot of barrier to entry um, and the the reward can be phenomenal. So there's a huge opportunity to um, take what you've already done and expand on your skill sets. Absolutely. That's great. I absolutely agree with you hundred percent. And it's interesting that you worked it in the background in cannabis as well, because cannabis is known to stimulate creativity and other, other notions aside that. So let me ask you this then, Kevin, can you tell me about Purple Penguin and what what your hope is to accomplish in regards to Purple Penguin? Purple Penguin came to be through um, a few different avenues. Um, my dad used to run a charity toy di- ter- charity toy drive, and um, you know that's always inspired me to want to give back myself as well. I've always felt that if I'm going to be working for nine to five or putting my my time into something, it should be something that benefits other people. Um, so Purple Penguin is our step into Web3 or NFTs with this in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked in the music industry for a long time and my nephew's around 12 years old. So I asked him, you know, what kind of music are you into? I want to get to know you as you become a teenager. What's cool to you? And he told me he mostly watches gaming streamers. Yeah. So for me, that was the way of you know, how do I reach my nephew and how do I reach Gen Z? It was through gaming. Um, so we kind of came to the conclusion that through gaming and incentivizing people for getting involved in climate action, we can create a fun experience and kind of change, um, the story of the doom and gloom that comes with climate change. Cause it's not a new conversation. It's something that's been around for longer than either of us has been alive, but it's always very sad and negative. Whereas through games and concerts and experiences, we can incentivize and create a fun narrative around doing good for the earth. Um, so with Purple Penguin, we hope to raise funds, educate, and you know, reach the youth and reach the, the next generations that will be leading the world for the next few years so that we can pe- meet people where they gather. Um, you know, I don't want to try to force people to go one direction or the other. So through entertainment, whether it's music, games, movies, uh, board games, like whatever it may be, we can reach people with this conversation. That's a very important conversation. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. And I like that this is this, this NFT project is for a social good, which is very important. Some many NFT projects are just basically selling art. And that's about it hoping to create royalties. There's not really any social good aspect behind it. So I'm, I'm glad that, you know, Purple Penguin is, is part of the idealism that we want to do something good. So, so let me ask you this then, Kevin. What do your slogans Web3 Entertainment for Social Good and Play It Forward mean to you? It's a great segue. Um, So the Web3 Entertainment for Social Good is um, essentially, like I just mentioned, right? Whether people are interested in film, literature, movies, uh, film as movies, um, you know, film, literature, uh, concerts, experiences, education, um, you know, if they like going to the zoo or if they like playing video games, whatever it falls into the entertainment category, which is a huge blanket. Um, we want to attach these different experiences to social good initiatives, environmental impact initiatives. So for the last 12 years, I've worked in esports, gaming, cannabis, a um, few other different fields, merchandise. So I've got a lot of contacts in industries that can provide a value or a, a reward or a gift to people for their efforts or for their investment in climate change. Mm-hmm. So through Web3 Entertainment for Social Good, we can entertain people and make it fun, as I was saying. 
and then play it forward. Um, it kind of a, a pun on that word play, like pay it forward is generally what you hear about when it comes to uh, social good and doing things for other people. So through play, we can create a fun way of paying it forward. So play it forward is our own version of pay it forward. That's awesome. And I like how you're utilizing the, the, the notion of play to assist in the idea of social good because people generally will participate in a social good if they if they find personal amusement around it so i think that's a really good idea to amalgamate both of those both of those um principles so let me ask you this then kevin in the first year how have you created a positive impact We've done quite a few things, actually, a lot more than we expected to in our first year. Um, through our first NFT release, we were able to donate over 3,000 US to a company called the Global Penguin Society. Awesome. Um, so they help with penguins through several different ways, um, whether it's rehabilitation, education. Um, they do excursions with kids where they actually bring kids to meet the penguins in, in the Arctic. Oh, wow. um, and in the Galapagos and places like that. So it, there's actually that element again of reaching the youth and bringing them to experiences because for example, I may not ever get to go to the Arctic, but if we can help a kid get there and, and see this, whether it's in a virtual experience or a physical experience, um, you know, that's one amazing element that we've been able to do. Um, we also have planted 100 trees with Treatum through their agroforestry program. Awesome. So we're actually about to roll that out um, this week. We just got our link to our website for it. So. With them, what we do is we have 100 trees that we've planted and we're going to continue adding to this forest, but they're planted globally and then they um, geolocate and attach the trees to a digital file. So you can actually track the trees online, see how much carbon is removed, see how they impact the local communities. Awesome. Because through agroforestry, we, they plant um, like foods and shrubbery. So it can provide food, that food, fuel and work for local communities around the world. So it's not just planting a tree and then waiting for it to remove the carbon. It's it's more of a, a well-rounded uh, impact. So we've done that with um, Treatum. And then, um, oh, why is the other one flipping my brain right now? Uh, we also um, adopted a penguin and our species ambassadors with the Toronto Zoo. Um, so with the Toronto Zoo recently, we um, signed up to be a species ambassador for the next year where we're going to donate and um, you know, feed a penguin, look after a penguin, but then also work on some experiences with them where we can you know, continue that education model. Um, and then coming up with our upcoming release, we're going to be working with um, the doctor from the Emmy Award winning film uh, Chasing Coral named James Porter. Okay. We're going to be raising funds for him and his team at the IDUM and Ultramarine Ocean Action Summit, where they're going to be removing munitions from the ocean that actually cause cancer to uh, animals in the ocean and shoreline communities that are about a rate of about 30% higher. And it also causes diabetes at an ex like even higher rate than that. So we're helping animals and humans through this um, upcoming release and in our, our initiative there. That's great, man. That, that's awesome. Good for you guys. Seriously, like that, that's really important. We, we really need, we need action in this space we need people to assist in reforestation we see in for example i believe it's haiti we see deforestation that happens so frequently we see the amazon that's that has deforestation and what they're doing is they're basically they're they're destroying the amazon for farmland that's not even fertile enough for for crop production mm -hmm which is pretty, pretty, pretty ridiculous to me. So it, it's it, unfortunate that we don't value a tree until it's cut down. Exactly. Someone said that to me a few months ago, and it really stuck with me that that that's how we view agriculture. It's not worth any value until we cut it down, whether it's food or trees right. or anything. It's really strange. Exactly. So would you be able to tell us about the three characters in your logo? Yeah, yeah. Um, so our three parrot characters are named Pebble, Minaki, and Hal. Um, Pebble is our purple penguin, and he's named Pebble because penguins use pebbles as a currency to uh, attract mates, and um, they'll actually steal them from each other. They're very precious to a penguin. Um, and our, our currency is also called Pebble. So cool. Pebble is our, our purple penguin in the middle there. Minaki is the more caring uh, pebble penguin, the blue one. Um, she's more aware of like sustainability and permaculture and things like that. So she's more educated around how the environment works mm -hmm. and how is the old wise penguin, the, the rock hopper who can hear the world and listen to the, what's going on. And he's more 
uh, in tune with how things are working. So those three penguins are our main characters, are our mascots. They're kind of like our, our Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. They learn about climate change and then go on an adventure to find other animals and learn how it affects all creatures in life. So every character they meet along the way can be a new character in our story, can develop into a new game and a new side tale. Um, but those three main characters there, they're our, our, our main uh, mascots who will tell our story and start and finish our adventure. Awesome, man. So let me ask you this about being being conscious about something that's very important. We know that proof of work blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum are not good for the environment by any means. They're there. Their carbon emissions are absolutely atrocious. So what what has been your approach to being conscious of the carbon emissions created by blockchain and NFTs? So we've kind of got a, a multifaceted approach, approach to that. Sure. Um, our first NFT we released on the Polygon network with the company Project Arc. So they were able to not only write the contract at a lower emission rate, but also uh, utilizing the Polygon proof of stake chain, we were our emissions are lowered on top of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we didn't really put out a lot of emissions with our first NFT release. And then through a company called Gaia Together, which um, sells carbon credits for mangrove restoration project that they do, we were able to offset the actual emissions that we did. Uh, create through the the minting process. Um, and then the next phase, as far as uh, carbon emissions goes, we're going to be releasing our upcoming NFTs on the Solana chain. Um, Solana is a very small eco impact. And then to offset those carbon emissions, um, we have our um, Treatum Forest with the agroforestry forest that I'd mentioned earlier. So we're not just buying carbon credits at this point, we actually have a forest that's living and we're continually adding to. Um, so that way we're not just a good greenwashing by purchasing credits from someone else. We're actually creating the impact ourselves. And then we have a really unique utility or be- added benefit for our upcoming Vagrant Penguins NFT release, where every penguin NFT that you purchase comes with an additional NFT that is a, a digital pin that you can layer over top of any picture or profile picture style um, NFT or whatever it is that you, that you have as your display picture. So um, you'll have a little pin, like I could kind of represent it on my shirt here if I wanted to. And that pin is attached to an account um, from a company called Coolgram that offsets the carbon emissions of your Twitter or your Instagram for one year. So we are actually, we're aware that, you know, NFT culture tends to live on these two platforms. Mm-hmm. So everybody's constantly tweeting, posting pictures, and this all has carbon emissions. Even this call here has its emissions, right? You can't escape mm-hmm. it when you're in a digital world. Of so to add an additional effect for the carbon emissions, not just offsetting what we're doing, but our community as well, we're going to be offsetting their accounts for one year or their um, social media accounts for one year and the emissions they create. And it's at about a rate of about 70 tweets per day. So that's much more than the average person puts out. Absolutely. That's awesome, man. I'm glad that you really are really taking a, a really strong initiative to basically put put your money where your mouth is and, and practicing what you preach that's very important because you don't you don't I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is is that in in the climate action society sometimes people attempt to remedy the climate but are also simultaneously hurting it and we need to realize that and I'm glad that you with your project realize how to nullify that harm and that's very important especially in blockchain and i'm glad that you're using alternatives to ethereum which are horrible which is horrible for the environment so kudos for you for doing that so, i always joke that we're a proof of stake company or a proof of work company on a proof of stake chain you know we're, <laughs> we're using proof of stake options but the proof's in the work of what we're doing exactly no i like that i like that. that's another good logo <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin, why do you believe NFTs can revolutionize fundraising? There's a lot of red tape when it comes to fundraising for um, different NGOs. So their budgets are very attached to rules and things that they can do. And quite often when they get donations from companies, it's so that they the company can get that tax credit and the NGO that's receiving the funding or the nonprofit receiving the funding can only use this funding for certain things that are approved by the company providing the funding. Um, so there's a lot of control when it comes to what these companies can and can't do. And they're really afraid of losing their funding. So that's one element, right? Is that we can provide them direct funding that they can use for what they need. So for example, with, um, the IDUM, uh, munitions removal project, when we make a donation to them, the donations actually automatically cashed out to a credit card that has 
approval for spends on specific things. So they can't add a scope creep where they want to buy a new fancy boat if they just because they want to spend that money. But then also they have a pre-approved budget and goals of what they want to achieve. So when we make the donation to them, they don't have to worry about losing this budget because it's not coming from you know some CPG brand that's trying to offset their tax um, with their tax credits. It's coming from people like you and me who are just giving them the funds to do what they need to do with it. Um, so that's one element of it. And then the other side is also the voices and the collective change. Um, there's something really powerful about bringing together 5,000 plus people and having all of these people have an interest and have different skill sets. So not only is their voice louder and word of mouth a thing, but there's also people with different skills in your community who can bring different things to the table and really fast forward what you're what you're putting out there. You know, if I meet you and you have a skill that I've never even thought about, then you're coming from this with a completely different perspective and together you can really snowball and create ideas towards fundraising and um, eco impact and social good that you may not have ever thought about and get them off the ground, not just come up with the concept, which is quite often where, you know, the crux of the biscuit is, you know, you get the idea to the point of creation and then, well, now how do we do it? So with communities and with the NFT fundraising, it really brings a new uh, element to the table of creating and getting things off the ground. Absolutely. I agree with you hundred percent. And I'm looking forward to seeing this project expand because we need more projects like this in blockchain. I don't see a lot of blockchain projects that are focused on preservation and conservation. So I'm really excited to see this, this project expand. And I like how you're able to solidify gaming and conservation. I've never heard of that before. So, so I want to ask you this next question. So why do you think there's a strong crossover between gaming and conservation? So gamers tend to be more imaginative and open to storytelling and um, being engaged in new worlds or new experiences. So from my perspective, I think that has a lot to do with it, right? You're open to being to discovery. So being open to a discovery, for example, when I'm playing a game like Zelda or Pokemon, I want to go to the island as far as I can go to see if I can make it there. And that's kind of part of where the conservation kind of thing comes from, because you want to see the world as it is. You want to explore this the planet that we live on. You want to learn more about it. It's kind of built into you at, at your core. Of course. Um, and then also beyond that, there's this element of um, being part of something like gaming culture was always kind of frowned upon, not frowned upon, but it, you know, it got the short end of the stick for a long time. And, and now it's starting to come into the limelight. But it's always this underground culture. You have your Discord communities where you connect with different players. You have your guilds. Um, so it's similar to the way that you have your eco-conscious uh, niche communities. You have the same people at the same type of concerts gathering. You have the same type of people playing the same kind of games and the same kind of people caring about conservation. So there's crossovers between all these places. And then within gaming and conservation, they're both these kind of underground worlds that it really exists in a massive space that sort of fly under the radar. So you're part of this underground culture that loves the incentivization, the exploration, the trade of challenge and reward. Like in a game, for example, Zelda, you run through this field, you know, you're smashing your sword around, you're collecting stuff, and then you get to this really hard part and then you beat it and you get a reward. Same idea with climate conservation. You're talking about it all the time. And then you get to this moment where you can raise funds for it. And then you achieve that goal and you see the results and then you can celebrate. And it's a very similar experience. I think that there's a lot of crossover from both the psychology and the experience. That's a very interesting intertwinement of those two philosophies and those two um, fields of interest. I like how you're able to, you're able to expand on that because I'm a big gamer as well. And I think that's very interesting how you could connect those two because I've never thought of it in that way. So that's really interesting. So let me, let me ask you this last question, Kevin. How do you plan to use NFTs, games, and entertainment to incentivize and reward your community? So currently what we've been doing is um, we have a live concert that we do every other Saturday in our metaverse for free. Oh, cool. So every other weekend for 12 hours, there's DJs from all over the world playing in our metaverse. And quite often we'll have a mini game challenge that happens during that where you can earn um, avatars and skins for the metaverse called the Nemesis that we do this in. 
Uh, you can earn NFTs, you can earn crypto and just general prizes. But then we have this free concert with headliners from all over the world that you know play big music festivals like Glastonbury or like local DJs from where we live in Toronto and all around the world. So that's one element. And then we plan on adding the in real life experience for that as well, where you can hold your NFT and either get a free ticket to the concerts we host or a discounted ticket to some concerts we're hosting or friends of ours are hosting. So we know so many people in this industry, right? Um, and then when it comes to gaming and NFTs, um, similar to what I was just mentioning, you can earn NFTs through playing games and participating in these experiences by purchasing one NFT from us with our Vagrant Penguins. You get that second bonus NFT of the digital pin. We continue airdropping you future NFTs for being part of our community um, just to you know say thank you, essentially, because it's the same idea as when you get that tote bag in the mail for donating to whatever charity it is with WWF or whatever it may be. Right. Um, but this time it's a digital version that you can take with you. you. You have ownership of, you can use it for commercial use for whatever you want to do and help expand on, on our mission. Um, so that's one we can, we can work with NFTs. And our idea with games is uh, multifaceted. We want to um, you know, utilize the esports connections in the community that we have and have an esports team and tournaments where we can talk about this on a grand scale and reach large audiences and raise large amounts of funding. But then also on a smaller scale, we can do um you know console games and hyper casual games like on mobile where people can play for 20 minutes on the bus and raise some funds through either a freemium purchase or a play to earn model um so that way we can reach people where they want to reach whether where they want to gather so if it's concerts and music that they're into and that's how they want to be rewarded then that you know the festivals and concert experiences is what will speak to them and if it's that they want to play some mobile games and they they really love gaming then we can reach them that way and if they're really into it then we can reach them through that esports world where you know we can reach millions of people at once through a, a simple tournament or something so there, there's a lot of different ways that we plan to utilize these um tools essentially to incentivize people for getting involved in climate action that's awesome kevin like i i really really appreciate that you're able to connect with your community i really appreciate that you're able to give back to your community because without community projects no matter what industry they are in they they they, they result to nothing so communities are so important. I like how you're utilizing the metaverse and this crossover is very interesting. So I, I'd love to, and I really appreciate you coming on. And I really, I really would love to do this again in maybe a couple of months and see how <clears throat> Purple Penguin has evolved over the next couple of months. Because this is a very interesting project and I think it's very needed. So I want to say thank yeah. you so much for your time, Kevin. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me out here. I'd love to come back when we have uh, we have our game studio at Zone 6 right now working on the physics and awesome. kind of like the world um, attributes and how it will work and how you'll be able to play. And then we'll send over our assets to them soon to develop the actual game. So, you know, once we have some of that, maybe I'll hop on and we'll show you a little preview as a, a little teaser for your channel of what's going on with the, the World of Purple Penguins for an update. Yeah, please, dude. Let me know. I mean, we'll be in the same, we'll be in the group chat together. And of course, thank you to Greta <laughs> to, to connecting us. And absolutely, like we will definitely do this again. So I want to say thank you so much for your time. No, I appreciate it, Corey. It's great. These these kind of conversations really matter a lot of the time. It's too focused on the the funds raised and not the funds raised, but you know this this sold for this much money. When there's a lot more that's being done in this space. If you zoom out, the, the industry is massive. So it's yes. really great, and I appreciate that you give us the time for this kind of conversation. No, oh, of course, man. Amen to that, brother. So thank you so much for your time, Kevin. Of course. Cheers. Cheers.